Okay, welcome all uh, of our domestic and international viewers. This is MTV Live Stage here at the Nordic Business Forum 2016. And Nordic Business Forum just keeps growing. You're going to Stockholm in January, so that's a good sign as well. My name is Peter Nyman. I'm news anchor and presenter here at uh, MTV3 in Finland. And it's great to be here again, third year on the trot in Israel. Uh, and once more, we've got a great variety of topics and, and big, big, interesting international names, stars even. We saw it a few moments ago here. Uh, and we'll be doing rounds with the seminar hall, so people will be, you know, coming on stage, off stage. We're taking turns between the seminar hall and, and, and this MTV live stage. Anyway, let's get down to business. It's a business forum anyway, isn't it? So that's so supposed to be. Exactly. We have here Scott Galloway, the angry professor. We, we heard you a great presentation Thanks. a few moments ago in the seminar hall. Clinical professor of marketing, New York University Stern School of Business. And we might say, I know if it, if it came through the, to the audience already, that you were elected to the World Economic Forum's Global Leaders of Tomorrow, which recognizes 100 individuals under the age of 40. It's an old poll, yeah. It's still, I don't know what to ask, it's still on. It's an old award. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, and whose accomplishments have had impact on a, on a global level. And we have our own angry professor here from Finland, Alf Rehn. Professor of Management and Organization, Orbo Academy University. One of the top international thinkers as well from at least a couple of years back. Yeah, old, old as well. Yeah, well but you, you're growing wiser all the time, so that, you know. It's at okay. least grayer. Yeah. Well, that, uh, as in wiser. <laughs> hey, great to have you here. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks for coming. Peter. Hey, uh, okay. I'm the TV guy yeah. whose uh, commercial business is about to die. Scott, I'll pick you up on that. Sure. So, so is it that gloomy actually? Because digitalization, of course, have transformed everything. But are we already dinosaurs? Are we goners? So, what I would say is that uh, Larry Sumner, who uh, was the president of Harvard, has a saying that it's it's surprising how long something can take, and then shocking how fast it can happen. So we all knew there was a video rental chain in the U.S. called Blockbuster. Mm -hmm. And we all knew in the 1998 it was going out of business, but it didn't go out of business to 2010. So typically the decline in industries where everyone says they're going out of business, it takes longer to go out of business than they thought. And by the way, people, including myself, have been, have been predicting the demise of television for a long time, and it hasn't happened. As a matter of fact, they've raised prices every year. I believe this is a pivot point, though. I think something is in the water this year. So, so what we're seeing now is basically, you mean, sort of a... a the last strike of the empire. The empire strikes back sort of once and looks as if everything is okay, but that's the uh, sort of like the bouncing cat. So it's uh, yeah, I think it's a that's right, a dead cow bounce. It's I think it's a sugar high. We're already seeing signs. The ad rates are down eight percent in the U.S. I believe they're down in Europe. I think Europe's decline will actually be slower because some of the digital uh, technologies and also some of the vendors to expedite the shift aren't as readily in place in Europe. So I think the decline will probably be slower in Europe than in the US. But I think here we also have a problem that it's uh, very much uh, a confusion of terminology. Because of course one, TV, one kind of TV is dying. On the other hand, as Scott also showed, we've never made greater series. We've never been more enthralled by TV in a sense. It's yeah. just that TV is mutating. And so I like Netflix in a way, in a way it's TV if you want to Absolutely. If you want to see, you know, here, call it like that. And here way, the yeah. important thing is, do you look at the right data? And I yeah. think what Scott has done very, very well is that it is trying to bring a kind of data first approach to this. So rather than kind of talking about TV will survive because Game of Thrones is great, we have to look at what's the actual data saying. Hey, I was actually going to fish this, this out from you that content, of course, that will go on, but will, it will be repackaged, of course. Well, so Alps point's a good one. So it, it, to just say TV, right, is a crude term. So what's under stress is linear TV that is ad supported. What's thriving is non-linear on-demand television where the content is so fantastic that consumers are willing to pay for it. 
So it's the business model and the cadence. Linear TV that's ad supported is instructional decline. Over the top programming, on demand, anywhere, anywhere you want TV that embraces either subscription revenue or maybe native or product placement, that's thriving. Never been better. The amount of content in the US has doubled. The amount of original TV programming has doubled in the last five years. It sounds sort of paradoxical, but it's not. Well, and, and then there's the other part. I mean, you sitting here, this yeah. is the disruption. Yeah. If you imagine 10 years ago, would a major TV channel drag this out to a business conference? No, because you didn't have to make those plays. You didn't have to make those collaborations. So there is also that part of the, the mutation of the channel. And it's really sort of a mind game as well, because in a way I could tell people that I'm, I'm doing TV here at the moment. So in a way, sort of, of course, if I want to package it like that, but yeah. we know, hey, now we can drop television, thank God, and, and they're going to, to talk about brand building in the age of digitalization. As you said, brand building, it happened, that's social media. We, we can skip the other old things as well, old school, old style marketing. So it's through social media, you said to yourself, Tesla companies who don't do traditional marketing at all at the moment. Mm -hmm. So new, there's new ways to discover brands. We used to trust the ad in the newspaper, the end cap in a store, a TV ad. Now we trust what our friends and influencers say online, and we also trust Google such that we can do diligence. We can find the best place, you know, the best hotel in Barcelona. We can find who is the best plumber. The, the, we can find 55% of all product searches in Europe and the US now begin on Amazon. Amazon is effectively a search engine with a warehouse, a warehouse attached to it. So we're, the path to consumer discovery, if you will, or product discovery is being reshaped, and it's new technologies and new products. But I was also talking about uh, info anarchy at the moment. I mean, it looks like chaotic at some times, at least, is it? Well, I don't think it's chaotic. I mean, if you but take... It it looks chaotic, but on the other hand, and, and I think that's the scary thing about what Scott is saying, we're looking at a world in which a very, very small amount of companies, Amazon, Google, Facebook, become de facto controllers of the entire mediascape. Very scary. And, and the, yeah. this, I mean, the, scary? the socialist no, part terrible. of me wants to kind of have a law <laughs> somehow controlling this or a committee of some sort. 25% of all retail growth in the U.S. is from one player, Amazon. 50% of all e-commerce growth is represented by one player, Amazon. If you took Apple, Facebook, Amazon, and Google, they're responsible for a disproportionate amount of the media and retail growth in the U.S. We have more and more power and profits aggregating to fewer and fewer players. And a half long-term future, what does it mean? What, what, what does it lead to? We see Where are we it? heading? What sort of marketing singularity is that? Well, where we're headed is we're headed that if you have the right skills and get into the right company, it's never been a better time. But the bottom line is it's never been easier to be a billionaire. It's never been harder to be a millionaire. It's an exceptional age to be exceptional, the right place, the right time, with the right skills. There's never been a worse time to just be good. So uh, it's very dangerous. It's uh, very the rate of change is like it's incredible. The, the, on one hand, I mean, you had previously if you were a somewhat decent plumber, you could trust that your line ad would get you enough business. Right. But what I fear is a situation where only the top, top, uh, with the 1% of talent, manage to actually find customers and the rest scrabble on. And, and that's a societal problem. That's a partly a business problem for them, but there's also a societal problem in the long run. But, 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 but if you want to brand, the age of digitalization, social media, all these new platforms. Uh, what ways is different from old school branding? I mean, connectedness, social media. Uh, easy actually, because branding is branding is anyway. It's how you behave, right? It's not marketing. It's it's behavior. Every single person in one company and the company as such, how uh, how it behaves, is yeah. different from what it has been. Well, uh, basically. So at the heart of it, it's trying to get people to behave differently. It's trying to influence them, right? But what's happening now is that you're turning to your friends and you're turning to trusted sources and you're doing your own diligence more than you are passively letting brands just pound at you with advertising. 
I believe that advertising has become a tax that the poor or the technologically literate have to pay. Wealthy people are opting out of advertising. I would bet more of your media consumption every year has less and less advertising because you have the income and the technical sophistication to download an ad blocker on your phone and subscribe to non-linear programming like a Netflix. But, but if, if you're a company you want to, to build a brand, I mean, a brand as such is behaving. I mean, I mean, the thing is, I mean, how all the people within the company behave and how the company behaves, that, that, that's what the brand consists of, right? Do you mean culture? Do you, uh, I'm yeah, not... you sort of culture, yeah, yeah. It means like, if, if you behave well towards the audience, that, that, right. that that's, makes your brand stronger. That, that builds basically your brand as well. Doesn't you mean being a good citizen? I mean, yeah, or, you know, in your community. I, I Treating the customers right, I mean, all this. Right, right. That's branding as well. I, well, I think what you're pointing to is the fact that uh, the kind of tacked on, the kind of plastered on branding that we used to have yesteryear, where you just brought in a company and said, these are now your colors, this is your logo, yeah. uh, this, these are the words you're supposed to repeat. That's going to die, because with Instagram, with Facebook, with Google, transparency will beat everything. So if more and more transparent all the time, everything. If your brand isn't true, I mean, if, you, if your brand is just a made-up story you try to kind of pitch to the technologically literate and other Otherwise, uh, socioeconomically handicapped, that will not man that won't work anymore. So, so that, that's one point. Fake is getting more and more impossible. Hmm? Well, everyone uses the word authentic and transparency. You is can it true? find. Yeah, I think so. Although, I, I, to be blunt, I think people overrate corporate citizenship. I, and what I mean by that is not that it's not very important. I think we need a new gestalt in business. I think CEOs are more focused on cutting costs than they are on being good citizens. But consumers talk a big game about how important good citizenship is to their purchase. But at the end of the day, they want a little black dress for $19.99. So, Corporate citizenship is a tiebreaker, but I think the vast majority of consumers are ruthless and will buy the best product for the best price, regardless of the supply chain. What do you think, Alf? I completely agree. I mean, uh, we, we think that uh, consumers are these hyper-intelligent, uh, reflective creatures, and, and we can all be at our best moment. But we've all done purchases uh, based on uh, our heart and our genitals rather than our brains, as uh, Professor Galloway so eloquently put it. But, but in this age of digital branding, if, if you fail, is it worse than failing before? Is, it's easier to come back. I mean, everything is moving so fast. I think consumers are really forgiving. For example, the Note 7 with Samsung. Yeah. I don't think that's going to be that big a deal. I think they've addressed it actually quite well. Uh, right. The thing you have to remember, be transparent, address the issue, and have the CEO kind of overcorrect. But I think if you, if you address the issue, acknowledge it, I think we're in a stage now where everything's so transparent, I'd like to think consumers are becoming a little bit more forgiving if you address the issue in an open and honest way. Is, is marketing and advertising as such Already, it's starting to be, you know, sort of too too much fake, too much a question of fake. I mean, it's not authentic. I think how you, if you do a, you know, draw up an ad or something, it's easier to do. You know, your Tesla example, going through the social media, not doing any any classic advertising at all. Uh, is that the way we're going? Tesla's Tesla is actually quite weak on social media, and interestingly enough, Apple almost does no social media. Where they have excelled, quite frankly, is the product. So the world is moving from branders to builders, people who can make great suits, yeah. great cars, great glassware. But, but somehow you have to spread the message, of course. I mean, what, But what if you buy a car and you love it, yeah. you will share that on social media. All of these platforms and all these technologies yeah. enable one thing, to share things we love. And so, and so you are the best mad man. Word, word of mouth, the product. this is word of mouth on steroids. If you have a better experience at this business forum, word will get out. They don't need to advertise. I, I will tweet that I love it here and that I like the people and, and that that's more I'm authentic. seeing skateboarders. And that's authentic as well. Yeah, my friends yeah. trust me more than they yeah. trust an ad. But at the Most same of the time. time. At the same time, though, we see now in Snapchat, in Instagram, in the new platforms, we see actually hybrids emerging where, where you will have a, a hot new company who does Instagram exceedingly well and people want to be part of that flow. People will connect to that. Hey, very shortly, a few seconds left. No text, only pictures. That's the trend as well. No text, uh, images? Only pictures. 
if, if, there, if you say to me there's a lion over there, I interpret it, it takes me a couple seconds and then I run. If I see a lion, I respond right away. We have been interpreting images for millions of years. We've been interpreting words for hundreds or thousands of years. We're That's much we better That's with images. Exactly. Yeah. Alf, thanks, we have to finish here. Scott Galloway, Alfred, thank you very much. Thank short, sharp, shock to start the day with. Thanks, Peter. Good, Good stuff. Thanks. Thank you.